Okay guys, like and subscribe and let's do this. So we're gonna need four things. We're gonna need a model for the holster. We're gonna need some kind of script that turns the holster along with the head. And we also need another script for placing a gun inside the holster. And last of all, we need an interface applied to anything that can be holstered. So I'm using the Oculus integration, but you can use Unity XR Toolkit or Steam VR or whatever, it doesn't matter. All you need to do is find your camera rig. So as a child of my camera rig, I have an empty game object, I'm calling it Holster Master. And this game object has two child game objects, also empty game objects, calling them Holster Left and Holster Right. Inside each of these, right now there are two snap positions and one model. The model is where you put your 3D model, I'm only using this transparent cube right now, but you can use any kind of 3D model you have. Now these snap positions are to place the gun correctly once it's inserted into the holster. So what will happen through the script is it will set the gun as a child to the correct snap position. It will zero out all the position values in the child, in the gun, and it will be placed. So if it's not correctly placed for you, you rotate and move it around until it is correctly placed in the holster. And then that position is exactly where the script will place it. Make sure you're moving the snap position and not the gun. And on the holster master, we want to place a script that can do this, that can rotate the holster along with the head. So if the head turns, the holster will follow. But you can extend this holster as well. It does not need to be this western style holster. It can also be a vest or some kind of SWAT vest, because all you have to do now is move move these uh, cubes around. You can copy them and add more of them and put them wherever you need to and it will follow the body in the very same, same way. So now let's check out how we do the script to rotate the holster. So I pl placed the script on the holster master and there's only one public property and it's a reference to the center eye anchor. If you do not use the Oculus integration, it might be called something else, but it's basically any camera. Any camera that's attached to the player's head can be used right here as a reference. So if you want to add a script, just add component, write some name, new script and create an ad. Mine is named Holster, as I said before. Now at the top of the script I have the public game object center eye anchor and this as I said could be any camera attached to the head but I'm using the center eye anchor. Drag it into the script. Add the rotation speed. So this will be the default rotation speed that the holster will follow us by. And all the logic here is inside the update function. First we need to set the holster transform dot position to the very same as the center eye anchor but we want to take half of y because the hips is about halfway up from the floor so we get the rotational difference between the center eye anchor and the holster so this is almost no rotational difference this is maybe 60 so if we reach a higher number here we want to make sure the holster follow us faster we have the final rotation speed, which we just set to the rotation speed to start. Then depending on the rotational difference, we will manipulate this number throughout the if statements right below. If we got almost no rotation, like in the top right corner, we want the rotation speed to be about a quarter, because we do not want herky-jerky follow exactly motion. We want it to go move slow if it's close to the correct position. If it's a little bit more, maybe 40 to 20 degrees, we want about half the rotational speed to be applied. And if we, we got a lot of rotational difference, above 60 degrees, then we take rotation speed times 2, so that the holster catches up with our face uh, facing direction very quickly. Last of all, we actually apply the rotation, so we calculate a step by taking the final rotation speed times time dot delta time. Then we take the transform dot rotation, which will be the holster master transform dot rotation, and we rotate this towards the center eye anchor Y rotation. But we ignore both X and C because we do only want to rotate along the Y axis. 
We also add the step to make it the correct speed and we are done. This is all we need to rotate correctly. And we are almost there. There's only the script and the interface left to create and they are quite simple. So let's create them. So somewhere in your script you will have to have a grab and drop functionality. So wherever you have this, depending on what tutorial you follow, I mean there's millions out there, just do one of them. And you will find where you do this. Where do you release your thing, your weapon? Because when you do this, we need to add these few lines of code. And all they are doing is checking if what we drop do have the I can holster interface. And if so, it tries to holster the weapon. So the interface is super simple. An interface is like a contract. Anything that implements that interface, we can know that they implement all the methods and variables inside the interface. In this case, there's only one. There's int snap position. So whatever gun that can be holstered has to have an int snap position. So this is the Uzi, just a comma and I can holster. And now we cannot compile because we do not implement the snap position integer. So let's add it just like that. And now we can compile again. And we need to do the same for any weapon that we want to be able to holster. So now if it's an Uzi, can holster will not be null because the Uzi has the I can holster interface. And this is very good for us because or else we would have to try is it an Uzi, it's, is it a Desert Eagle, is it whatever. We don't have to do that. We only have to check does it has the I can holster interface. If that's not null, then it has it. So then we want to call the holster weapon method and pass on the interface. So what we want to do here is look through the game and find anything tagged holster. And that's why you need to make sure that your holsters are tagged holster in the top right. Both of them or all five of them. You can have as many as you like. Next we loop through all of the holsters that we found in the scene and we want to know the distance between the object we are dropping, the weapon we are dropping and the holster, the specific holster. So this method returns how far away they are from each other and we will have the distance to holster. Next we make sure the holster doesn't already have a gun inside of it. If it has a child that has I can holster that means it has a child that is a gun so if the child is null, it does not have a gun already and the distance is less than 25 centimeters, then we want to check what is the can holster snap position. For the Uzi, for the Desert Eagle, it will be a zero. For the Uzi, it will be a one. So in case it's zero, then we want to grab the first child of the holster and we want to copy that rotation and the position of it. And the first child is the Desert Eagle snap. That means that the Desert Eagle will have to be at the zero snap position. In case it's a one, that's the Uzi. So we will get the first child, the number one child, which will be the second child since it starts by zero. And that will be the Uzi snap and it will put the Uzi as a child of this snap position and it will zero out all its position values until it's placed. And then at the very end what we want to do is grab the rigid body from the weapon and set is kinematic to true. This means you need a rigid body on your weapon. And you need to grab this and put is kinematic to true so that it doesn't keep falling. It doesn't use gravity. And then we make the gun a child of the holster transform. So it will be placed like this. And follow the holster 
but having the position and rotation values of its snap position. Last of all, I have this default. You do not really need this, but if you start adding more snap positions and you are using, let's say five, but you have not fixed this function yet, then we will fall into default zero. But let's say you added case two, in that case, you will add another snip, uh, snap position in the editor and change these to twos. And we also need to add the break. Just like that. But I'm going to remove this because I do not have that snap position or the weapon yet. And that is all guys. I hope this was clear. I tried to spend some more time making it beginner friendly. I hope you're happy. Please let me let me know if it worked for you.